Welcome to section 4.1.3. In this section we're going to be expanding our trig table. Uh, on the In class we used a uh, program on the computer, the dynamic geometry tool, to look and find some of these angles. We're not going to be able to do that here because uh, we don't have the setup yet for that. But I want to tell you where you can go. You can go to this location and if you'll go here, then go down to section 4.1.3, go across to under the column that says Internet, and click on that, and it'll take you to a tool that'll let you do that. It's actually a pretty neat utility, um, and it's really nice. If we wanted to do it by hand, we don't really have time, but we could take some graph paper, we could draw one line that's straight horizontal, then draw another that has our angle and then we could make a slope triangle on it and make the best estimate that we could. Remember that you're going to be off some when you do that, so this is a very rough estimate, but it would give you a rough idea of what it should be. Now, when we are going to find sides and angles today, we're going to want to make sure that we get one of our ratios from the chart and one of them from the triangle. We've we're going to use this chart because it's going to save us some time since we don't have the uh, dynamic geometry tool and it already has these ratios in here all the way from 0 down to 89 and so we're, we're going to use these and I've done this video several times so you'll see that I've actually already written on here but we're going to um, go through the process anyway and just kind of make a few marks as we go okay the first problem they gave us they gave us this triangle, had a 55 degree angle, um, had an 8 on the change of y side or the delta y side, and they had a 5 point, not, they had an x on this side. If I set it up, 8 over x is the one from the triangle, and 55 degrees shows as 1.429 or 10 over 7. I'm going to go ahead and use the fraction 10 over 7. So here's the one from the table. Cross multiply, 10x equals 56, and then simplify by dividing by 10, and I will get 5.6x. Okay, Let's see if we can zoom in on some of these. And it's going to be a little tricky. On this one, same kind of problem. The angle is 70 degrees, and they gave us x and 10, so I'm going to put x over 10. And I'm going to look in my table to find 70 degrees. 70 degrees is right here. I go across, and they give me the number 2.747. Here's a shortcut. If you want to make a decimal number like this into a fraction, or anything into a fraction, just put it over 1. It'll make it easier, especially if you're using a calculator. And so let's just do some cross multiplication. 1 times x is going to be 1x, 2.747 times 10 is going to be 27.47. So that is what I put down. My measurement was about 27.47. On the next one, they give me the side measurements. So I'm going to just write the ratio and then match it in the table. 50 over 6, that's approximately 8.3. So in my table, I'm going to start by looking in this column that has my ratios until I find 8.3. Then I'm going to go across and I find out that that is an 83 degree angle and that's what I put on here. Okay, now I'm going to do this one, 10 over 1, ratio is going to be 10. Go to my table and find 10. 10 is right here and let's see what goes with it. This one right here, it looks like it's 84 degrees, and that's what we put on that one. Okay, problem D gave us an angle, and we're missing a side piece. So we're going to write the part of the triangle we know, 20 over X, and then we're going to find 8 degrees in the table, and we see that it's going to be 0.141. So I put 0 0.141 over 1, multiply it out by cross-multiplying, 
20 equals 0.14x, divide by 0.141, and I get 141.84. The next one asks us to find the angle. And I can tell that this is probably not drawn because they say correctly, because they say this side is zero tall, but then they show a line. But I'm going to go ahead and do it the way that they're showing, and I get 0 over 14, which equals 0. In my chart, I'm looking for the ratio that equals 0. Well, that's this one here, and that's going to be 0 degrees. So even though it doesn't look like it, that is 0 degrees, and it's actually not a triangle. Okay, the next one gave us a measurement of an angle, and we write our fraction, x over 2. You'll see I did that here. And then I look up 89 in the table, and it is 57.29. So I come up here, put 57.29 over 1, cross multiply, and I get 1x equals 114.58. The last one gives us this angle here is 90 degrees. Well, I can tell that we're not going to have that as 90 because if it's 90, it's going to be going straight up like this. I already have another 90, and those are going to create two lines that are parallel because the consecutive interior angles add up to 180. Not a triangle. Remember, the angle ha these angles have to be less than 90. One, if one of them is 90, the other one has to be less than 90. Otherwise, they'll be parallel and they'll never meet. Now, um, so this one is not possible. It's a triangle. Now, give me one moment here to find the sheet that... I was looking for, um, I believe we did both of those, okay. Now, they asked us some questions at the end to think about that have to do with this table. And so, let's see if we can get this table just, just big enough that we can see some of these values. Okay. The first question says, what happens to the slope ratio when the angle increases? So here are the slope ratios. Let's look at their numbers. And if you can't read them, um, I will tell you that they are getting larger. They start at 0 and they end at 57.29 here at 89 degrees. One of the breaking points on here is 45. That's a, I call it a break point because it marks a place that's very important. Everything smaller than 45 is less than 1, and everything bigger than 45 is larger than 1. And so that will help us answer some other questions. What is, what, it says, when, the, when is the slope ratio more than 1? More, when it's more than 45. When is it less than 1? When it's less than 45. Then it asks, what will it be at 0 and 90? Well, we already know 0. 0 won't have any height, so since it doesn't have any height, It'll have a zero over, this could be any number for the run, if you just keep going. But zero divided by a number is zero. On the other hand, if you have the 90 degree angle here, it's going to be a straight up and down line. And a straight up and down line is not going to have any run, just rise. So it'll be a sum number over zero. Well, we learned a long time ago that you can't divide by zero, so we say that it's undefined or it's not possible. Okay, well, we're almost out of time. Just a reminder that we went through these pretty fast on showing you how to solve them. Um, it was just a little more practice. Please get out and use the dynamic geometry tool. It'll be a good chance for you to see how some of these um, values were calculated. Um, I hope this helps, and good luck.